Good Thursday morning. Today is uh, today is July the fifteenth. Yay, payday! Uh, well, payday for just payday, and then um, uh, you know retirement. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be weird when it's the fifteenth or the first, and it's not payday. But we will see what happens, right? Um, I have something funny to tell you guys. Um, last, uh, you know how memories pops up on your um, Facebook account, and it uh, it popped up that on July the thirteenth, twenty twenty. You know the the day I was teaching that day, of course, and it popped up that I had on this shirt which is, by the way, such a favorite shirt of mine that Maya told me last year, you wear that shirt too much. I do, I love this shirt. It's a fig and flower shirt, super comfortable, I love it. And so last year on July the 13th, 2020, I was wearing this shirt in Bible study. And uh, I laughed out loud when I saw that because this year on July the 13th, 2021, I was wearing this shirt, and it's the first time I've worn it all summer, and so I think that's pretty funny. I think that's hilarious, but I'm easily entertained today because I'm in a really good mood. Uh, Steve's doctor appointments yesterday all went very well, and uh, we got to meet his new primary care doctor, and so uh, so it was a good day yesterday. I have uh, I have this website or not web facebook site maybe it's a website that i'm on that um it shows people and they take this stuff that i would think trash it and uh they turn it into really cool stuff sometimes and sometimes i'm like mm, i mm, i don't know now i'm not a super crafts person um and i'm i'm not very artistic uh, and I'm not naming and claiming any of that stuff, but I, you know, I know my skills. But yesterday, I came across something here at my house that being an elementary teacher for as long as I was, uh, you know, I was like, uh, I need, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always looking out for stuff that could be turned into games and that kind of thing. I'm getting a, a text message from somebody who knows I'm in Bible study. So yesterday, I got this. I got this thing. And um, it's one of those things, of course I'm gonna throw it away, so don't everybody get excited. But I was thinking, uh, if I was still a teacher in kindergarten, or first or second grade, what would I do with this? Or how would I turn this into a science experiment? And I was thinking, you know, if uh, if I was like getting ready to have a big party out here or something, maybe I'd turn that into a firecracker. It looks like a huge firecracker. Or maybe I would uh, turn it into a Christmas decoration. Or maybe I'd just throw it away. I bet you cannot guess what this is off of. I'll give you two hints. It's not paper towel holder. It's huge, guys. And it's not a uh, roll for toilet paper. So I'm gonna give you those two. Last year during, you know, the worst of the pandemic, wouldn't we have loved to have found uh, a toilet paper roll this big? So, uh, you know, uh, I wonder if you have any idea what this is, but I'm gonna throw it away. I'm gonna throw it away, but I don't know. I kind of found it kind of fascinating. And so uh, today we're gonna look at something a little bit different. Um, we're going to look at, um, we're gonna look at Romans 8. Uh, I'm gonna turn that, Romans 8 and 37. Romans 8 and 37. We've been talking this week, I've been all fired up about, um, about you know, coming into agreement, about finding if we're worthy or not, about knowing that God is able. Last night I was watching a, a, a <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, teachers know what to do with this, Lorraine. We do, we do. I mean, as I said, 
if I weren't retiring on Sunday, I would, I mean, I, I'm thinking about it anyway. Christmas wrapping paper holder. No, that's not correct, Carolyn. That's a good guess, but that is not correct. So uh, I was thinking about how we have been talking about how we are worthy and how God is able. We're, we're worthy. God's able. And so what does that make us? I was thinking about this yesterday. Uh, I was thinking, what does that make? What does that mean in my life? What does that make me? And this in Romans 8, 37 says, In all these things, we are more than conquerors. In all these things. Now, we've been talking about something. We've been talking about something in our lives. And, and we wrote down on our little piece of paper something. What our something is. What our something is. And we, and we folded it up, and we're going to commit that to God's hands. And we know that he's able. We believe that he's able. And that's um, good. But then we believe that we're worthy for him to answer and come to our defense. So if we believe Romans 8, 37, and I do with all my heart, it says, you know what? We are taking this situation, we are taking this something, and we're putting it in God's hands, and that means he's going to take care of it. He's going to take care of that something and cause us to be more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Um, when John was uh, playing soccer for Grace Brethren, we, uh, we passed by a school and their team name was the Conquerors, the Conquerors. And I said, oh, that would be a good name for a sports team. And John said, seriously, Mom, Conquerors? He said, if I was to come up against that team, I would just constantly be saying, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. And he's right. More than conquer conquerors. Now, listen to this. The conquerors, if you are a conqueror, if you have conquered something, if you have won over something, you've conquered something, well, then you're victorious. It's not a bad thing to be. It's a great thing to be. I am, I am a conqueror, but this is telling us, you know what? You're more, you're more than a conqueror. So it's not like you won, but you really, really, really won. Think of, uh, I was talking about soccer team, so we'll go with that. Think about if the score of a, at a soccer match, think about if it was 146 to 3. 146 to 3. Well, this is what you would say. The other team, they showed up, the little three team. They showed up, but they were overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly beat by this other team. So when you look at this scripture, this is saying not only Satan's attacks are going to come. We know that. God let us know that, that there will be attacks in our lives. There will be things in our lives. There will be trials. There will be temptations in our lives. But he has already overcome that. And by him overcoming that, we, through Christ Jesus, <coughs> are more than conquerors. Kathy, I see that you're sitting there in an appointment. You are more than a conqueror. More than, if you didn't just win, you're more than a conqueror. Yesterday, when we left that doctor's appointment, I felt like going out and saying, oh yeah, uh-huh, oh yeah, uh-huh. We are more than victorious. We didn't just get a good report yesterday. We got a really good report yesterday. And the one thing that Steve said, maybe if you would uh, help me with this, uh, and, and she immediately said, absolutely, more more than victorious above and beyond victorious is what he has made us it says we are more than conquerors through him through him 
through him. Now, what if you're at that soccer game and you're a sideline player? You're a sideline player. Well, if the other guys and the other girls get out there and they win, you're part of that winning team. It doesn't matter if you didn't play one minute. You're still part of that winning team. You're part of it. You are grafted into that just by the fact that you're still on that team. Still on that team. I am on God's team, and because it is through Him, then I am more than a cocker. I'm winning. I'm winning. It's a win-win situation for me. Because, listen, it says, I am convinced. He's saying, I am convinced. Now, what does that mean, convinced? Beyond a shadow of a doubt. There is no doubt in my mind, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, we, we know that um, this is the way it is, and this is the way it is, and this is the way it is. I am convinced you cannot just tell me otherwise. You cannot persuade me in the other direction. You cannot give me a list of, well, here's 75,000 reasons why you, that you should not believe that. I don't care about that because I am convinced that God's word is true, and it is for directly me, directly me. It should have said Jan's Holy Bible. Jan's Holy Bible because God gave it to me. When God gives us these words, it says, I am convinced. Now, what is he convinced of? He says, I am convinced that neither death nor life. Now, you might say, well, he's talking about the good things and the bad things. Well, not always. Death Death, he says, it cannot defeat me. Life, he is saying, it cannot defeat me. Death cannot defeat me. Even when I die, it's not because I'm defeated. It's because God has chosen that moment to take me home. And what about life? If you feel like you're defeated by life, of course you have. I mean, we, we feel defeated by life. But this is saying, you know what? Neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons. Nor angels nor demons. Nor uh, the present nor the future. Huh. The present or the future. Why doesn't he say the past as part of this? Because Paul's not worried about his past. Paul had a ridiculous past. Some of us have had a ridiculous past. Here's another thing about when you go to the doctor and you start giving a family history. And you start giving a family history. All right, so that's past, right? That's past. But it's past. I, I was talking yesterday about inheriting, you know, some of mom's qualities. Not many, but some of mom's, uh, her looks, her features. But yesterday when that doctor was going through Steve's uh, family history and that kind of thing, some of that stuff's kind of scary. I'm just going to say some of that stuff is kind of scary. Some of the things in my past are kind of scary. Years ago, my doctor said, you should be taking, uh, uh, you should be taking a beta blocker. And I said, I... Uh, I don't, do you think I should? I, I don't have high blood pressure. I do have cholesterol that I keep under control with medication. But um, do you think I should? And she said, well, and she looked at my chart and she said, oh my goodness, yes. Because both of your parents, talking about mom and dad, died from sudden massive heart attacks. And I said to my doctor, wow, that's so mean. And I said, but that's true. That's true. But I'm going to tell you something. Our past has no hold on us when it comes to God's power. 
And our present is not under siege if we will allow ourselves to let God go in and fight that battle. And I'm going to read you some scriptures in a minute about that. I am not worried about what is in my past. Paul says, I'm not going to worry about what's going to happen today or what's happening today or what today looks like. I'm not worried about what people are saying my future is going to look like. He's saying, I am not worried about that because I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. I am convinced. As surely as Ainsley Walls is my own flesh and blood. I am convinced, he's saying, that none of this can separate. It says not any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. Now, let me just tell you something. If you want to put a finishing touch on a list, you add at the bottom, or anything else in all creation. Or anything else in all creation. Or anything else in all creation. So in other words, Paul is saying that there is nothing, 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 zero line through it, nothing, no, void, nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. That feels pretty good. That feels pretty good. I want to be on team God. I want to be on team Jesus Christ. I am a part of that team. I got saved when I was a little girl. I've always walked with the Lord. I want to be on that team. But what if these things keep coming in and trying to trip me up? And what if these things somehow separate me from Jesus Christ? This is saying, you know what? Quit worrying about that. I'm not worried about that anymore because I'm convinced that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Now, once you've got that, once you've got that in your mind, man, you can go out and you can just beat the snot out of the devil. You can just take a big old ugly stick and just beat the devil good. I'm not worried about it. I'm convinced. I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive that nothing, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Now, I want us to look over at Exodus 14, 14. Exodus 14, 14. All right, Exodus 14, but I want to look at 13 first. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. This is when they're thinking, maybe we should go back. <laughs> maybe we should go back into bondage. Maybe we should go back into slavery. We're afraid because the past was terrible, but right now it's looking pretty good to us. And our, our present is just a mess. We don't know what the future has. And then he says, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord today. You will see the deliverance of the Lord today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. I'm, I'm just thinking about this something that we've got. I'm just thinking about this something that we've got. And we've committed it. We've submitted it into the hands of Jesus Christ. And what if we were able to allow ourselves to say, this thing that stands before me today, the Lord is going to take care of it, and I will never see it again. I will never see it again. I don't know, maybe the dogs will eat it, but I'll never see it again. Because the Lord will fight for me. Look at 1414. 14. The Lord will fight for you. You just need to be still. You need to quit wobbling back and forth. You know, weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. You need to quit being indecisive. You need to quit straying from here to there. 
He's saying, just stand where you are and commit that thing to me and watch how the Lord will take care of it. See if he won't make you more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror means not only is that enemy defeated, I won't ever see him again. I won't ever see him again. I won't ever see them again. Huh. That's when something's taken care of. I'm not only not worried about it anymore because I'm standing firm and I'm convinced and I believe that he is more than he is more than a conqueror in my life and he's taking care of that situation. I don't have to worry about running into that situation again tomorrow. My enemy is defeated. I had an enemy on Facebook a few years ago. I've told you this before. And now I, I can't even, I unfriended him at the advice of my very wise husband. And now, I don't know, the other day I thought, well, I wonder what they're doing now. I can't find them. I'm not saying they're dead. I'm saying I can't find them. And they're no longer in my face. I will no longer see them again. That situation is defeated. That enemy is beyond my reach because the Lord has taken care of it. The Lord himself has taken care of it. Now let's look at Jeremiah 1, 17. Jeremiah 1, 17. Jeremiah 1, 17, it's right after Isaiah. Jeremiah 1 and 17, get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. This is saying these enemies are getting ready to come in. It says, get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify, uh, do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them today. I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but look at this, but they will not overcome you. They will not overcome you. Now, you're going to have to stand up. It says they're going to fight against you, but they will not overcome you. For I am you, with you, and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you, sometimes God delivers us before we even go into the fire. Sometimes he does. And sometimes, as we are going through that fire, he delivers us. He overcomes the enemy as we're going through the fire. And sometimes, on the other side of the fire, he delivers us straight into his hands. When we are going through a situation, when some things are a part of our life, we continue to look to God's word and it says, it will not overcome you. What does it say? Get yourself ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Stand up and say to them whatever I command you. And then it says, don't you be terrified by them. Don't you do it. That's not part of my plan. Don't let them see that you're afraid. Don't you stand there and sweat and shake and bite your fingernails. Don't you be terrified. You be strong. You stand up and you be brave. You walk into that situation because, yeah, they're going to fight against you, but I'm going to overcome them for your sake. I, God, who is able and willing, is going to overcome the enemy for your sake. I'm going to overcome the enemy for your sake. You're going to go through a fire. You're going to go through a trial. You're going to go through a fight. But I will overcome the enemy for your sake. For your sake. Now look at Psalm 23, 4. 23rd Psalm. Everybody knows that. But I want you to look specifically right now at 23 and 4. Even though I walk 
through the darkest valley or the valley of the shadow of death. Through the darkest valley. Say that. The darkest valley. Cancer is a dark valley. It's a dark valley. Miscarriage is a dark valley. It says, even though I go through the darkest valley, look at this, I won't fear any evil. I won't fear any evil. For you are with me. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I used to think, how on earth, how on earth can we be comforted by a rod and a staff? A rod and a staff. Because that's God's way of shepherding us. Of shepherding us. Taking care of us. Setting boundaries for us. And then guiding us in those boundaries. He's not going to let any evil overtake us. So I feel safe in his hands. I feel secure in his hands. I feel like I'm going to be okay. Okay in his hands. Steve said something one time that just made me bawl and cry. Steve grew up an only child. And uh, he liked it. He liked being an only child. As a matter of fact, I don't know that I've ever talked to an only child who said, I hated being an only child. I, Steve liked it. He likes being a part of, of my big family. And, of course, he loves our big family. But uh, he liked being an only child. And he can do alone really well. I cannot. I cannot. But Steve can. If I say I'm going to be gone all day because, I, you know, I'm, I'm going wherever or whatever, you know, he's like, <clears throat> I'm going to miss you, but, you know, I'm, I'll be okay. And so, um, so when we are out walking, uh, as I always put my hand in Steve's hand. Now, sometimes he reaches back and grabs my hand, but mostly it's me reaching out and grabbing his hand. And one time he was at a conference of some kind, and he was talking about never feeling alone. And he was talking about it through Scripture. And then he said, one of the things I really love about Jan is we'll be walking along, and I'll maybe be deep in thought, and she'll put her hand in my hand. He said, and I love it when Jan does that. You see, we're not alone. We are in God's hand. We are, I, I had some little uh, dolls from a, a dollhouse that I had downstairs that I was gonna use as this illustration, but I've already packed them, and I don't even wanna unpack not one box, but just think about that. You're safe. You're safe in his hands. You're safe. You're in good hands with Jesus Christ. This says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. I want you tonight or this afternoon to read 2 Kings 7. It's kind of homework. Second Kings 7. Second Kings chapter 7. The whole chapter is about how God takes our things and he delivers us in such miraculous ways that the enemy has to stand there and say, What just happened? What on earth is happening? I love the thought. I love the thought of my enemies being so bumfuzzled, 
so distracted, so caught off guard by my victories, by my victories, that they have to confess that Jesus Christ is the only way that could have happened. How on earth could that have happened? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you today that we are in your hands, that you're holding us, that you make us more than conquerors, that you defeat the enemy so that all we have to do is stand firm and be convinced and be persuaded that you are our king and that you go before us in every battle. Lord, we are not going to worry about our past or today or tomorrow. But Lord, instead we're going to look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Second Kings chapter 7. All right. Anybody got any ideas on what this is off of? It should be easy, guys. You should know this. What am I doing right now? Moving, 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 packing, packing. This is what a ginormous roll of bubble wrap came on. Let me just tell you, bubble wrap is the most fun you can have. It is the most fun you can have. There is nothing on earth as much fun as bubble wrap. This um, bubble wrap, mm -hmm. bubble wrap was on this, which means I'm getting ready to have to go to Lowe's and get some more because I am finished with the bubble wrap, but I still have my good dishes, which are in this cabinet right here. Carolyn Sweet and I have been talking about what what stays and what goes, and uh, we've decided that this hutch needs to go uh, somewhere else. No, I'm not going to just throw it away. It's going to a good home, really good home. Uh, and so I've got to wrap uh, dishes and antique dishes. It won't take me long because I my Christmas dishes are all wrapped. My everyday dishes are all wrapped. My what on earth, why on earth am I still saving these dishes? Those are all wrapped. And my intention was to uh, some, uh, I have three sets of dishes that I was like, you know what? I've not used those in 20 years. I'm going to give them away. Amy took one set. The other two sets I carefully, <laughs> I carefully wrapped up to give away. And then the movers picked them up and took them to Tennessee. So uh, there they are. All right. Bubble wrap. Da, 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 da. It's, it's also an awesome megaphone. Awesome megaphone. All right. I'm having too much fun with this bubble wrap today. Hey, by the way, um, this beautiful necklace that I have on today, isn't that gorgeous? It's new. I got it while I was in Cleveland from, a, from an exquisite little shop. Uh, I think it's uh, probably handmade. Um, isn't that beautiful? Uh, I got this at Ace Hardware, <laughs> at Ace Hardware in Cleveland, where you can buy geraniums, and you can buy buckets, and you can buy a hammer and nails, and you can buy exquisite, beautiful jewelry. God bless you. I love you so much. What does it say? I'm glad to know I'm not the only person with four or five sets of dishes. Oh, Lorraine, it's, it's, uh, it's an addiction. But they're beautiful. They're all beautiful, and I don't want to give them all up. And all of them have special meaning to me. I did manage to give away Christmas dishes at Christmas time because I had um, five sets of Christmas dishes. So I gave uh, three sets away. Mike and Godwin said no. My other kids said no, but they live up here, so I just delivered them to them. Uh, let's see. My dishes that I got when Steve and I got married, I have those. Um, 
but now I have Mary Gilliam's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, dishes and Christmas dishes, so I don't need anything else. I've just got hers now. Yes, that's the sunflower behind me, and it has new, um, new little buds. They're just starting to come out, and I have it leaned up against the window. You can't tell, but it's so tall that it's um, wobbly now. So I've got it up against the window, and I finally found a tall stick, so I'm going to go out there and stake it. But a stake in its heart. I'm going to go out there and stake it so it'll straighten up a little bit. Elder's Ace Stores has great stuff. Check out the one in Knoxville. Elder's Mercantile. <gasps> okay. Same owner as the one in Cleveland. All right. I was in Cleveland last week. I should have gone to Ace. You should have gone to Ace. I love that store. I love Ace Hardware. I, I like I like the one here, but the one in Cleveland is <laughs> it's just awesome. I, I, I just love it. I love hardware stores. All right. God bless you. I will see you today's Thursday. I will see you tomorrow morning. Uh, God is good. Uh, Ainsley, Sally, have you been to the one in Knoxville? All right. I got to go to the one in Knoxville now. I love Ace. I know it. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Or is it? I don't know. It's not a Southern thing because I love the ones up here. But I'm Southern. So, all right. God bless you. I will see you uh, tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.